Welcome to this new tutorial on Inkscape Basics. Inkscape has changed a little, so I thought it was time for a new tutorial. If you don't know already, Inkscape is an amazing free program for creating expert vector graphics for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux devices. I'm using a Windows version 1.2.1 1 .1 in 2022. We will see most everything you'll want to do in under 10 or 15 minutes using Inkscape as a newbie. You can also follow along by noting the keystrokes and mouse clicks I use by looking in the lower right corner. Now Inkscape, uh, a vector-based drawing program, is compatible with files and SVG. It provides textual markup for graphics that can be read by web browsers. It's incredibly simple to use and compress without sacrificing quality like typical bitmap files ending in JPG and PNG. Now Inkscape starts with a blank document in the middle when you launch it, just like this. And on the left are many drawing tools, while on the right are is, you know, it's a panel that will likely have some dialog windows at various times. If you look above, you'll see the primary bar showing properties and settings for the active tool or you know, currently chosen item. By heading to the preferences under the edit men menu, you may want to choose a different interface theme that works better for you. To each his own, right? Before creating, you might need to click the document properties under the file menu to change the document's format, page size, or orientation. Here you you may also change the grid and the guidelines. Before we look at the tools on the left, let me show you how to move around and prepare the canvas. You can zoom into and out of the canvas by using your plus and minus keys, respectively. Using your keyboard and mouse, you can also, you can zoom in by either a control plus middle click on your mouse or a control plus right click. If you want to zoom out instead, you can use a shift middle click on your mouse or a shift right click on your mouse. Also holding down your control key while moving your mouse scroll wheel, you can zoom in and out. To create more exact drawings, uh, you can also use a variety of graphic tools, including both the horizontal and vertical rulers, and then the guides that can be dragged from those rulers. Notice the display in the lower right corner area showing your X and Y coordinates. All of the snapping, uh, the snapping parameters can be configured at the upper right corner or far right depending on your interface layout. You can switch on or off the snapping here. You have multiple options for snapping also. Turn your grid on and off uh, by doing a shift plus number sign key. And then, um, and you can also find it under your view menu. Now let's examine how to to use your various tools on the left side of the Inkscape interface. Notice each tool icon has a tooltip text showing the tool name and the keyboard command. See the command for rectangle? It's R. So you, just by hitting R on your keyboard, you can get the rectangle tool. Also, by clicking these tool icons, you can create various shapes such as rectangles, circles, ellipses, stars, and polygons. Just click the icon, move to the canvas, then click drag and release. Additionally, you may uh, create spirals and 3D cubes in the same manner. Now above the canvas, you may also change the size, corners, and the shape type. In the middle of the toolbar, you'll find tools to create customized paths and shapes. Now here's a tool you'll likely use pretty often, the Bezier tool. Click its icon, move to the canvas, 
click on the canvas and drag or just click and then move and do it again to create your path. Uh, close your path by clicking on the node you, you made at the start, or you could also just double click. You can change this tool mode and other options right above. Uh, the Bezier tool has the default Bezier mode, a Spiro path, and others you can experiment with. Okay, now here's the freehand tool. Use this by clicking down and dragging to draw as you would with a pencil. Or draw a straight segment by clicking once, moving your cursor, and then clicking again. The, the freehand tool also has different mode selections above, just like the Bezier tool. Now right below the freehand tool is the calligraphic tool. I hope that said it right. It, it also has many options above, just like the other two tools. You can create text with the text tool. Uh, click the tool icon, click on the canvas. Uh, you can um, just start typing. You can also click and make a box. Um, but just uh, click on the canvas and then type your text. It also has many options above to format your text, like font, style, size, spacing, and orientation. And choose the font color from the full list at the bottom and in the orientation. Um, you'll notice that the fill on text, you just you just can click into the one of those colors. And then to get the stroke of a text, if you want it, you hit shift and then click on the color. Now that we have created a, a few shapes and items, let's look briefly at our, our history. Uh, view it in the dialog box by clicking it under the edit menu or holding shift control H. If you need to go back to a previous point in time, just click on that command in the dialog box. Additionally, you can activate the split view mode by holding down the control plus the six key to move a, a separator that reveals or conceals all object strokes and fills in order to grab the vector skeletons, you know, the, the nodes and such. Let's now take a look at how to modify objects when the select tool is active. Okay, so any object can be moved by clicking and dragging it after it has been selected. You'll see the objects uh, dash box appears with the many scaling arrows um, around it available for, for scaling. You can press and hold the control key in order to hold the aspect ratio when you scale it up or down. Click the item once more on the object to rotate it or skew it. Again, continue to note the keystrokes and mouse clicks I use in the lower right hand corner. You can use the Control X or Control C, Control V keys to cut, copy, and paste respectively, just like other software you've used. Also, you can also you can always use the Control Z combination to undo. Uh, additionally, by double clicking the object, you can activate the associated drawing tool. For example. If you double click a uh, rectangle, you activate the rectangle tool. And that's pretty cool, I think. However, if you double click on a polygon, you can't use the polygon tool directly afterwards to draw a new polygon. You can edit the current polygon by manipulating the, the white nodes. Try pressing the space bar when you have a tool selected. Pressing the space bar on your keyboard changes your tool back to the selection tool. Pressing it again changes your cursor back to the previous tool you used. And each Bezier tool path node ha can be adjusted not only with your mouse, but the options shown above. And here's a tip on the, the, on the freehand paths. Control plus L simplifies and smooths your path. Okay, uh, look above again. Now each item or object, when it's selected, can be transformed in various ways. Uh, each option tells exactly what it does 
in the tooltip text. So you just hover over with your cursor and it'll tell you. You can also change the item's x and y coordinates, change its size and lock its aspect ratio when you increase it or decrease its size. With the selection tool, uh, select multiple items for by clicking down and then dragging. And once selected, you can move and scale all um, at the same time. Click on an item in the group to rotate or skew them all. In the path menu, um, you can perform many different Boolean operations on two or more items. It's it's just mind-boggling how many, how many operations that they actually have, but we won't go into those. Now, to change an item's appearance in the fill and stroke, just go to the lower left corner of Inkscape's interface, click into either the fill or the stroke colored area, and the fill and the stroke dialog box will appear on the right. Here you can adjust your colors, gradients, colors, or the stroke style, opacity, blur, and, and more, really. Now, Inkscape has many filter operations you can do on your objects. Too many to mention, really. But you can find them in the filters menu up here. And right next door, you have the extensions menu, which offers tons more. Most won't touch this area, but feel free to explore because there are some really interesting um, operations in there. And you can also install extensions that are not currently in your Inkscape. You just have to find them. And a lot of times you'll find them on Inkscape's website. Some extensions are intuitive and some are not. And some take longer to actually learn how to use them. Okay, now you, you might wanna save the file, right? Do this uh, to do this. Go to the file menu and click Save and give your file a name. You have many options, but just use the just use the SVG file default to save your file for now. Uh, you can learn all the others some other time. But saving it saving it as a SVG allows you to easily edit your file later. Now, if you want to save as a raster file, uh, just click Export to save as a PNG file. If you want a JPG, you, you're just going to convert it with another program from PNG to JPG or GIF or whatever. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of it. I appreciate it. Uh, if you did like it, please click the like button. And then also, if you want to subscribe, go ahead and do that. All right. God bless. Bye-bye.